Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode, I can't remember, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm in fucking Tasmania, all right? I haven't done the podcast in over a month because lockdown was making me sad, and then I had a bit of a mental breakdown when they announced that we weren't allowed to work in person, uh, even though media was allowed to work in person, but apparently creating online media doesn't count. So I moved to Tasmania. I've got Keelan with me. I've hired a new person and I've, I'm renting a, a house in Tasmania and we have to quarantine here for two weeks, but that's fine because it looks like I was going to be quarantining for four months in Melbourne. So now I'm here and I'm a lot happier and I'm going to do the podcast. I'm going to do my job. I've already made two videos. We've been here for fucking two days. It's going to be great. I get to do my shows now. It looks like Brisbane and Gold Coast are going to happen because you can fly from Tasmania to anywhere. Because look, if there's one thing I want to say to start off this episode, I want to make really, really, really clear. Now that I'm a resident of Tasmania, this isn't an Airbnb. I'm renting a house. So I live here now. And can I just say, as a Tasmanian resident, you mainlanders don't know what the fuck you're doing, all right? You fucking mainlanders, you've been talking shit about us Tasmanians for years. Oh, we have sex with our cousins. Uh, we're, We're not very educated. That's all you got, all right? Well, how about this? How about this, all right? You dirty, diseased, filthy mainlanders, how about this? Go outside. Oh, what? It's illegal, can't relate. Well, I can for the next two weeks because I'm in quarantine, but when I get out, dude, I'm going to get a haircut. I look like shit, all right? I haven't done, I haven't been able to do anything. I'm going crazy, but now I'm here. And the best thing about moving uh, two people and yourself interstate and renting a second house is how much money it costs. So, dear God... Please support me on Patreon. I will actually be doing the secret, uh, the the podcast episode, the Patreon. Fuck! I will actually be doing the Patreon podcast for real. Please help. Because now, and this one's for the OG fans of Spearhead Sundays, I've got two rents. No longer do I have two phones. Now I've got two rents. All right? This is a gamble and a half. I think it's going to work, but for the next three months, I'll be pulling my hair out. But that's fine because I need a haircut anyway. Guys, the Tasmanian era of Spearhead Sundays has begun, and I just want to kick off today's episode with reiterating the point that these mainlanders don't know what the fuck is going on. They don't know how to run a bloody country, all right? They're running after each other, right, chasing their bloody tails, thinking that we're we're a bad place. Next thing you know, right, everybody wants to bloody move to Tasmania. Fuck off, we're full, all right? You know what I'm doing? I'm shutting the door behind me. I'm in, and I'm shutting the door. Get out. You diseased Melburnians and you filthy Sydney-siders. Oh, we have an economy. Get out of here. We don't need that. We've got... Who's our premier? Peter someone. We got Peter someone, all right? And Peter someone is doing such a good job that I've actually Googled his name and since forgotten it. So let me tell you, if you know the name of your premier, you live in a shithole. Peter Gutwin. Peter, Peter Gutwin. All right, and and you know what you know you know why he's called Peter Gutwin because he only wins and he goes by his gut. That sucked, but I'm here and I'm happy to be here. the The trip over was great. We took the spirit of Tasmania over, and it really felt good to just get into the spirit of Tasmania. You know, I, it really felt good just like rocking around, not having any activities to do, and feeling kind of sick. You know, so I, I'm pretty. I'm I'm mixing in with the Tasmanian culture already. Uh, it's really great. And you know, it was awesome to see, cause obviously I've missed a few episodes and I did, I did make a promise with you guys. Well, not less of a promise, more of a pact. Uh, I did make a bit of a, a somewhat of it. Some would call it, look, some people have been saying that it's a suicide pact. <laughs> I'm not going to agree with them, but I'm also not going to dispute it because I don't address rumor. All right. A lot of people have been saying that I made you guys promise and myself promise that if I missed an episode of Spearhead Sundays, I would jump off the West Gate with you. Now, as I was, you know, as as the spirit of Tasmania was leaving, it was really great to see, uh, like, you guys giving me a send-off, just hundreds of bodies flying off the West Gate. 
Uh, and that was really great to see that the, the dedication that you guys have to the show, that as I was leaving, instead of fireworks and a bunch of women waving white handkerchiefs, I just saw like incels and people with autism jumping off the Westgate. <laughs> Uh, and it's really good to get that kind of that kind of send off from my from my fan base. There were a few nine out of ten goth girls in the mix too, but it was mostly incels. Uh, and and uh, <laughs> I'm and I'm man, I'm stoked. I'm so on a on a serious note. I'm really fucking happy to be here. Everyone's so much happier. You know what I did this morning? I did something that I that that I haven't done for since the start of the year. I opened up my phone. I checked Twitter. I read that Melbourne had 120 cases, 170 cases, and it made me laugh because it's not my problem. And I think that's great. And that really is the, the Australian spirit, isn't it? It's like, oh, this sucks when it's happening to me. But when it's not, sucked in, you fucking mainlander. And that's what that's what this is all about. I've betrayed my, my hometown. Jeez, I who would I, I've had a lot. There's been a lot of debate actually among my audience, and I I'm actually I don't even know what I think about this. Normally, I have a very strong opinion when you guys are arguing, but this one even I don't know. And this is a very serious question, and I want to know the answer. Please write it in the comments. Is moving from Frankston to Tasmania an upgrade or a downgrade? I don't know what it is. It it could be it could even be a sideways. Could be no no upside or downside. Moving from Frankston to like the city, that's good. Pre-COVID. Moving from Frankston to Tassie, even without COVID, I don't know if that's an upgrade or not. Because I've moved from Victoria to Tassie, which some would call a downgrade, but I've moved from Frankston to to uh, Hobart CBD. I'm in the middle of the city, so that's quite nice. Do you know the the place that I'm in? I I just got whatever I could get. Like I applied for 25 short term leases across the country. I was looking at Adelaide, Perth, Tassie. I even fucking tried to uh, book regional Victoria because I was like, well, if we're going to be locked down anyway, at least we'll be locked down together and we can work in person, right? So I applied for everything and I got 24 no's. I got one yes and it was this one and I just signed the lease straight away. I didn't even really look at it. And I've lucked out, guys. I'm in a very nice area. I'm in a very rich area. I saw a Tesla just driving around. Couldn't hear it, but I saw it. And that shocked me because I didn't, one, I didn't realize that I was in a wealthy area and two, I didn't know her butt had electricity. You know, I didn't know that ta- that Tassie had that yet, but but now that I'm here, I understand why those filthy mainlanders would make up, you know, malicious rumors about us because they're jealous. You know, Ooh, I want to go to the beach. I I'm surrounded by the beach, three sixty degree beach, baby, and 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 wherever I go, it's within walking distance. That's how small it is. You know, I've been talking to Greeley. He's from Tasmania. He lives here now as well. He's been calling me every day because he's in lockdown. You ever, you ever feel like telling your mate to stop calling you? No, no, I love Greeley. But every day is a lot, you know? He's in quarantine. <laughs> and look, I, no, I'm not going to do that because that would be snitching. I'll tell that story after he gets out of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Keelan knows. Uh, look, he goes, oh, man, you're in like uh, – I was like, "Oh, is that bad?" And then they all start laughing. I'm like, "Oh no, I'm going to I'm going to get a drive by." Speaking of another big motivator for me leaving Frankston was at about 4 a.m. one night, I woke up to the sound of a woman screaming, "You're a woman basher, you're a woman basher." 4 a.m., I went out I put some clothes on, I put some shoes on, I stick my head out the window and there's a man sprinting down the street. Sprinting. You ever see a man sprint? That's, we're, we're pretty fast. I've never seen a man sprint in real life before and, and other than in a sprinting race. You very rarely see anyone like full on 
full bore sprinting in public for seemingly no reason. Well, this man's reason was dastardly. This woman screaming, what a good word, dastardly. I would never, I wouldn't really, it's a bit of a comical describer, dastardly. You know, like if you, if you call someone a fucking woman basher, you really look down on them. But if you call someone a dastardly woman basher, you kind of respect them a little bit because it's like they've done it in like a mischievous way. Like a cartoon villain, the dastardly woman basher. Anyway, makes me, makes you, really makes you picture a guy wearing a top hat and a cape, like creeping up. Just bashing chicks. And you're like, ah, oh, you got to watch out for the dastardly woman basher. Anyway, I see this guy sprinting down the street. Like full on sprinting. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I go out. I run back. I tell Jess to call the cops. I, this woman is still screaming, hysterical. I go out because I think he's sprinting after her. So I go out ready to fucking fight the guy. Right, which is a great way to start your morning. You want an early start to your morning? Don't, man, don't listen to David Goggins. Oh, you got to get up, rise and shine every morning. Fuck off, Gary V. Oh, you got to wake up in the morning and chase your goals. No, you don't. If you really want to get a good start to your morning, just get like the biggest surge of adrenaline you've had for the last five years and prepare yourself to defend a woman's life in the street at 4 a.m. That's what the, I was so productive that day because I had to spend that energy somewhere. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so I go out to, to, to like get this guy off this woman because I think that's what's happening. And then anyways, Jazz is calling the police and then he just starts walking back up the street uh, in, the, in the other direction from where he came back towards where he was running from. And I work out that he was not chasing the woman. I'm like, oh, he must have just been like running away. That's weird. And and me and like five of the neighbors are on the street just calling the police. And then he's just walking past each and every one of us, looking at us a little bit ashamed. No one's really doing anything. Man, talk about a walk of shame, you know? Sometimes women will feel a little bit guilty walking down the street carrying their high heels. I've never had to walk down the street after I've shoved a high heel into my girlfriend's face. That's that's a walk of shame. So anyway, he's walking past. Everyone's giving him dirty looks. This woman is nowhere to be seen. And we're on the phone to the police and we explain. And let me make it clear. When Jazz was on the phone, she's calling the police based on what we heard. So we're like, there is a guy beating the shit out of a woman in our street and chasing after her. So like just about as dire as it could get in terms of a triple zero call, right? So I'm thinking, oh, the police will be here in like a minute 30, max. The police station's around the corner. There's heaps of cops in Frankston because there has to be. This will get sorted quick. Then it was seven in the morning. I didn't hear a single siren. She, I'm thinking, well, she's dead. She's fucking, it's done for her, Right? This is why I understand why Americans are like, we need guns because you can't trust the government. Everyone in Australia is like, oh, you know, what do you need a bloody gun for? And then you call the police and go, hey, yeah, I'm watching a woman getting murdered right in front of my very eyes. And then the police go, yeah, we'll send someone over in a couple of days with a notepad and some chalk to outline her body. Bye. (laughs) At least let us have pepper spray, you know, a taser. An LED light that could shine in someone's eyes and it hurts their eyes. We can't even have those. Um, seven in the morning. I'm up. I'm working. I'm like, geez, what a, what a productive start to my day. I hope this happens every morning. I got so many emails done. I see this dog like walking around, clearly lost. Collar on, looks lost, a little bit old. I'm like, well, that's not a stray. Sniffing around, being walking across the road. I'm like, I better get this dog before it gets hit by a car. So I go out, it starts barking at me, it's real scared. I'm like, okay, cool. I go back in my house, I get some cat food. I start feeding it, it comes up, it's really nice. It loves me, right? Made a new friend, I'm like, cool. I start slowly leading it into my house. And then this woman carrying a bag of McDonald's 
comes into my front yard, sees the dog, and she's like, oh, is that your dog? I said, no, is that yours? She goes, I'm looking for a dog. I'm like, are you looking for this dog? She goes, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean? You're just looking for a dog. Are you, is this some kind of like I spy game? You're just looking like, find me a dog for three points. What do you, what do you mean you're looking for a dog? You don't know what dog you're looking for. When I'm looking for something, I check to see what it looks like before I look for it. Cause otherwise I'm just an idiot with a bag of Maccas looking for an animal. Right? So anyway, I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to give this dog to this woman if she can't even tell me what the dog looks like. And the dog doesn't walk up to her. So I'm like, oh, well, it can't really... I don't think it's her dog. Sorry, I've moved into state. My life's still hell, so I'm getting calls every day. You ever move state and tell no one about it and then wonder why people want to know why you did that? I have. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny of just like out of nowhere moving states and like not not like for a little bit just like moving house and then going and then and then announcing that you're leaving as you're getting on the boat and then losing internet access as everyone in your life tries to call you to ask what are you doing it's pretty fucking awesome i highly recommend it um actually i don't recommend moving to tassie fuck off we're full all right you dirty mainlanders are trying to come out come out over here because we know how to run our state, but you don't know how to run yours, all right? We are, are, are the highest percentage of vaccinated people in the country and we haven't had a lockdown all year. So just because you guys fucked up your state and you want to move to the superior state of Tasmania, the real Australia, doesn't mean we want you here. I'm closing the door behind me. Get out of here, you dirty mainlanders. Right. Anyway, I, as I'm doing this podcast, I'm progressively becoming more and more vertical. I hope you don't mind. Um, yeah. So this woman, she's looking at this dog, and the dog's looking at her like she. The dog doesn't know her. She's like, "Oh, I'm looking for a dog." I'm like, "Okay, well, keep looking, bitch, because this is clearly not your dog." And then, about maybe a minute later, this guy comes up out of nowhere, and he sees the dog. He comes into my front yard. And then he just falls to his knees and starts crying. The dog runs up to him. Clearly his dog. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. And then he looks at me really weird in a really scared way. And then I recognize that this is the guy that I saw sprinting down the street after he beat the shit out of a woman who is almost definitely this chick holding the bag of Maccas. So they're still together right? And he recognizes me before I recognize him because I didn't really recognize him as he was sprinting, but I kind of saw him when it was really dark as he was coming back. And then I go, oh fuck, this is the guy that was beating the shit out of the woman in my street, right? And then I, I kind of put two and two together. I'm like, he must have been, that must have been how the dog got out. He beat the shit out of her and then during the chaos of that, the dog got out and he wasn't sprinting after the woman. He was sprinting after the dog because the dog came from the direction that he was running earlier in the day. And as that happened, I thought, what an up and coming suburb Frankston is. You know, it's really on the come up because it can't get any fucking lower than that. No, it actually is on the come up because <laughs> it literally is getting better as bad as it is because as I was calling the police to report uh, a violent domestic violence incidents in progress as what I thought was a woman getting murdered in the street I looked over to my neighbor who was also calling the police to report the domestic violence incident and he looked at me and said oh well it's not the worst thing that happened in this street there was a drive-by just down there so it could be worse And now I live in Tasmania and that's why these mainlanders don't know what they're doing. They can't even they can't even run a bloody suburb properly. No, for real though, I think it is lockdown that's sending people crazy. Like I moved in and there were a couple of shady things when I first moved in, but lockdown has made it frequent. Like there's lots I hear lots of bangs and burnouts and sirens and screaming where I live, whereas I used to never hear it. 
Um, and now I'll never hear it again because I live in apparently a really nice area of Hobart, which is which is kind of like living in um, in a in like a third world country with internet access, you know. So anyway, you dirty mainlanders don't know what you're doing. Um, and also, big news for my stuff. So the reason we've done the reason we've made the move is because one, I want to be able to do my shows, and uh, the res- the trap for the states that can do shows. They'll only accept travel from other states that also have no COVID. So Tasmania was kind of like the only place that I was confident would not have COVID for the next six months. Because I, lo- I know a lot of people are like, why wouldn't you just move to Perth? I'll tell you why. I don't have faith in anyone surrounding Perth or anyone's ability to keep everyone out of a state that has roads that go into it. You know, like you can't sneak into Tassie. There's no way to sneak in unless you fucking take your own sailboat or you jump in your own little tinny or you somehow get lost on your way from Afghanistan to Australia. No one's coming to Tasmania accidentally. In fact, I think all of those third world refugees are actively avoiding Tasmania. Has there ever in the history of Australia, in the history of our so-called boat people crisis, have any of those cunts landed in Tasmania? Even they look at it and go, mm, no thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll roll the dice in, in, where do they land? What's the closest edge to wherever most of them are coming from? Doesn't matter, guys. Afghanistan is on an island. Look, don't fact check me, all right? <laughs> I know that, okay, okay, look. Okay, yeah. Thing. Afghanistan may be landlocked. <laughs> if you made it in a boat from Afghanistan, <laughs> dude, dude, you got to check out that cunt's forearms because that is some impressive rowing power. That dude would have lats so big he could fly the rest of the way. If he, if he like, rowed his way through the sand into the ocean and then to Tasmania and then went, nah, fuck that, and made it to Sydney, I would be impressed. Where do they come from? I think they go Afghanistan to Israel. Right. No, but no one's coming from Israel and then leaving by boat here. Oh, oh I thought you meant where are the Afghanistan people going? Oh, the Afghanistan people are going nowhere. They're stuck now. Oh, they're all coming from... Um, I have no idea, actually. Some of the people from Afghanistan are coming from almost orbit. Okay. If you watch the videos on TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> we are back. Um, <laughs> geez, that's fucked, isn't it? Um, anyway. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, so the reason why we've done it is, one, to, to pull off my shows. So it looks like all, all of the shows that are on my website are going ahead. We've moved most. You know, I was, I was, I think Brisbane, which is going to be the first dates of my tour, was supposed to be like almost the, la- the final shows of the tour because I love Brisbane. It's my favorite place to do stand-up. And I always like ending my tour in Brisbane so that I'm, so the show's like perfect and I'm super rehearsed and hyped up. Now it's going to be where I start. It's still going to be great, but it is so weird to start. I'll be, and they're by far my biggest shows of the tour too. So I'm going to be starting in Brisbane. It's going to be fucking massive. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to go, I'm probably going to end in Hobart, to be honest. Um, so that's reason one. Reason two is obviously we've hired a new person full time. Uh, to gradually replace Keelan, who is moving to full time Luke and Lewis, uh, and we've we've hired someone and she's great, uh, and 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 her job is to it's to control me, because I'm the most disorganized cunt on planet Earth, and and this is this I'll tell you this is how I knew she was the right person for the job, is when she accidentally on the Spirit of Tasmania left a sandwich on the top of her roof, and it's and and doing that little thing a little bit wrong. Something so small that didn't matter at all. I reckon she thought about jumping off the boat, <laughs> and and that's the type of energy that we need, you know. Where where if if we if we miss uh, an episode of Spearhead Sundays, she'll go. That's it. I'm going to the Westgate. That's what we really need. So I'm looking forward to never missing an episode ever again, and having a scapegoat if it does happen. 
<laughs> no, I think honestly, I think that it's going to be really, really great. The reason why the podcast wasn't happening was, to be honest, I was stuck in my house and I was sad and I was going crazy. The last thing I wanted to do was sit down for an hour and try and be funny. I was barely getting through Luke and Lewis and then I could do a video sometimes. Already, just being here, I'm doing this, I'm loving it. We've shot two videos, we've done two stand-up clips that will be going on TikTok uh, and we've been we've been set up here rolling for two days. So already it's all fucking happening and I'm stoked and I think the future of the next six months of this podcast, my online stuff, my stand-up, the tour, it's looking really, really great and I'm very, very excited for it and I appreciate you guys sticking with me through all this stuff and if you are stuck on the mainland, I, just, I really just, my thoughts are with you. I just wanted to say, fuck off, we're full, you dirty mainlanders, all right? We don't want you. Get out of here. What else did I want to talk about here? Move to Tassie. Oh, yeah, we terrified the neighbor. We absolutely terrified the neighbor. Because Tasmania hasn't had COVID at all. But what we have noticed is that just being here, we, we listen to a little bit of the radio, we've watched some of the TV, and we get some of the news. All of it is about Melbourne and how fucked Melbourne is. Like every single thing you see on the radio, on the news, social media, everything is about how fucked Melbourne is. So I imagine the vibe is very much, don't let those cunts ruin our state. That's the vibe, right? And as we moved into this place, we start unloading all this stuff from the car and obviously it looks like we're moving in. So one of the neighbors comes out just to, for a bit of a sticky beak to see what's going on. And they go to Keelan, they go, oh, oh, you guys moved in. Uh, and he goes, oh yeah, we've, uh, we came from Melbourne. And she went, oh, oh, what are you doing outside the house? Where were you? And just before I could say at the cinema <laughs> and the supermarket and then, and then the local market and then a doctor's office and an old folks home and then a primary school, Keelan said, oh, we've just moved in. And she went, oh, okay. Right, and and I can guarantee you that that bitch is currently in her house with a pair of binoculars watching our front door. <laughs> if if we if we left this house for a second, there would we, we would get raided. You know, there would be a police response that I would ex, that I was expecting to get when I last called the cops to stop some domestic violence. That's what I get here. You know, I've actually been getting texts from the cops doing this check-in thing, going, hey, we want to check where you are. Please check in here. And then your phone gives your location to them. And I was like, I'm not giving the police my phone location. Keelan does it. Rosie does it. Immediately, of course. I waited two days. And then guess who gets a call from the police? Rosie. <laughs> Private number. She's like, I wonder who this is. I said, I bet it's the cops. And it was. And they wanted to talk to me and to check that I was still there. And he said, mate, you need to do the thing. And I was like, all right. I just didn't want you guys to have my GPS location at all times. And he went, well, mate, you're a fucking mainlander. So you will be tracked. And I went, how dare you? I'm not a mainlander. I'm a, I'm a resident. I'm an approved resident now. I pay my taxes. Sometimes. <laughs> um, all right. We got time for let one more thing. The, um, let me tell you about right. what happened at the baseball game. Yeah, I want to hear about this mascot. Keelan told me so apparently there's something that's happened at a baseball game that's exciting. And you know it's not the game. You know, I've never, I've never heard, man, the baseball game was so good. I have heard several times, do you know what happened during the baseball game? You know, that happens all the time. That's, a, that's the real marker of a shit sport is when there are more videos going viral of what cunts are doing instead of watching the game than there are clips of the game. And that's baseball to a T. Even golf is more exciting than baseball like, you never see fights at golf. I would love to see some senior citizens punching on, you know, someone, like, breaking someone else's Rolex and throwing it in, in a crocodile's mouth. I would love to see that. 
So what's happened at this baseball game? So this was a game at the uh, Colorado's Rookies game, which yep. I guess is a team. And during the game, the comment there's like microphones in the audience. Yeah. And the commentators start realizing that someone's yelling out the N word uh, while a black guy is up batting. Oh, screaming it at the guy. Yeah, yeah. And so right. this is a this is a segment. This is a sorry a paragraph from a news article. The incident became a hot issue on social media. After the uh, after the words were picked up by microphones behind home plate and heard on the television, and then everyone got upset with him and cancelled him. Like Twitter cancelled this. Poor oh, so guy. they found the guy. Yeah, or not? What do you mean cancel this poor guy? <laughs> yeah, <sorry. Or> this, <laughs> I mean, if this story is going to turn out differently yeah. to what we think, maybe preface it with that. Don't start <laughs> with. Oh man, this guy was like screaming racial slurs at a black bas- at a baseball player, and everyone was. Everyone didn't like it and he got cancelled. Poor guy. Jeez, the internet sucks, doesn't it? A, ma- a bloody man can't be aggressively racist yeah. to a sportsman anymore. It's, you know what it is? It's those bloody mainlanders and their PC culture. <laughs> so it, did, it got really out of hand. So they tracked down the, the guy that was yelling this yeah, they and ruined him. his life. They cancelled him. They banned him from all future games. The Colorado rookies, like... Made a statement about him. <laughs> and then some journalists found out who the guy was, yeah. went to his house, and he was like, I don't know what I did wrong. I never said the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> Plays okay. him the the clip of yeah. him saying the N-word. And he's like, no, I wasn't saying the N-word. I was saying Digger, which is the name <laughs> of the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this guy's life has just been destroyed. He was named and shamed and everything. <laughs> He was so confused about what... what <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. He was thinking he'd been banned from the games for saying the mascot's name. <laughs> um, fuck. Man, that's so... Man, trial by social media is awesome because every... You know, sometimes they're right, but a lot of the time they're not. Oh, that's so good. So what happens now? Because if your name and face is plastered everywhere as like an aggressively racist man... Nothing. Like you can't undo that. Nothing happens. He just but Major League Baseball or the rookies or whoever yeah. it was, they apologize and they say yeah. sorry. <laughs> I hope he sues them. Oh yeah, and right? I think he probably definitely got like free tickets for life or something. Well, I mean, I I would I probably wouldn't want to go to those games because you know that there would be fans of that sport that would have seen the first cancellation and gone, if I ever see that racist cunt at a game, I'm going to knock him out. Well, the, the very funny thing is that people got upset because there was a black guy hitting. Yeah. Whatever the terminology is. Batting? Bat- batting, yeah. Um, and everyone was upset for him. And yeah. it turns out the guy had no idea this even happened. Right. The guy hitting didn't even know it was an issue, didn't hear him, yeah. didn't hear the guy yell at Digger. Um, was a non-issue to him. So the guy got cancelled for incorrect incorrect facts yeah. and for something that didn't affect the guy, everyone thought it did. That's a great point, Keelan. I agree with you. Even if he was screaming the N-word, if the <laughs> black guy didn't hear it, who cares? That's what you were trying to say, yeah? Is that what you, was that the point you were making? <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mean it to sound like that. <laughs> we're back. Um... <laughs> That's that's really great. I hope he sues. Because I guess he could because that would have been the baseball team going, this guy is a racist, plastering it everywhere. Fuck him. <laughs> Man, that would be so bad. I bet for the next for the next decade if you Google that guy's name, it'll come up with headlines that just haven't been corrected yet. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. That's that's the scary shit about this um, that's trial also by such social a media stuff. Thing to happen. Everyone's so bored of the game that they, they decide to get upset about that. I love that. That's like believable too. That some guy that would just would just stand up and just start <laughs> screaming <laughs> racial slurs. Like that's I don't know. I feel like like there's some very real racists, but not many of them are that dumb. You know, like that's like some fantasy land shit where you know. People, it's a great story, so they want it to be true. And that's how that shit kind of happens. That's awesome. Fucking mainlanders. 
Um, anyway, all right. I think we've got time for a couple of emails here. Uh, and then and then we'll, we'll be ending it and I'll be back next Sunday. Uh, well, I'll do my podcast, my Patreon podcast, actually straight after this. So if you're listening, the Patreon version will be on uh, right now. Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Check it out. There's a big backlog of episodes that are up right now and you get access to the Discord server. And you'll help me pay my two rents. Dear God, what am I doing? I hope my shows happen. All right. <clears throat> We've got uh, this one here. Hey, Lewis, uh, big fan from the, of the podcast. It's been helping me get through some some rough times. Well, <laughs> I guess the last month has been as shit for you as it has for me, mate. Uh, for some time now, I've been trying to get into dating properly. Oh, the, the, the subject line is, I'm a slut and it's destroying my life. Um, for some time now, I've been trying to get into dating properly, but I only ever seem to have one night stands. I would go on a date and it would go very well, but we would always end up going home together and fucking. And then uh, in, come come a week's time, we don't contact each other ever again. At first it was nice, but it's really starting to eat away at me as it feels like I can't connect with anyone. It's been happening with both men and women I've been seeing. What? Player? Um, I know the solution is probably just slow it down, you stupid horny cunt, but I thought I would ask a, fe- a fellow long man for this thoughts. Have a shit one PS. Once you get that jaw fixed, hit me up. (laughs) But not before. You know, I understand. Yeah, look, honestly, my advice to you would be if you're looking for like a meaningful connection, get the fuck off Tinder and uh, engage with an interest that you have in real life. You're not going to meet, you're not going to meet someone. Does anyone know anyone who's, who's been in a long-term good relationship that they met off Tinder? Where'd you meet your girlfriend? I met her swimming. swimming. An interest that he has, right? Do a thing that obviously has men and women there, or actually in your case, it doesn't matter at all. Do a thing and connect with people like that, whether it's school or, you know, sport or nerdy hobbies or whatever. I don't think you meet partners on Tinder. I don't think that's a thing. Like, I don't know anyone that has set up a long-term happy relationship on Tinder because you're using, you're complaining about using Tinder for its intended purpose. It's for hookups. That's what it's for. That's why everyone's there. The, The whole thing is shallow and vapid. You're uploading a photo, the hottest possible photo of you, and then you're swiping right on the hottest people that you see. It's, it's for sex and fucking and for ego boosts. It's not really, for long-term relationships. So if you want actual connections with people, maybe don't go to the app that is for hookups. That's my advice. Go out in the real world and meet people while doing things that you enjoy. And don't do those things to meet people because then you're going to come off as desperate and strange and creepy. Just engage with interests, meet and talk to new people, and you will connect with someone. It's not that hard. Like people, or I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because I got a girl. Um, but I, 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 when I was single, I never really felt like this pressure to I must find someone because I, you, I did, and that was the biggest roadblock to me making connection with anyone. The minute I started going, well, I don't really, I don't really desperately need a girlfriend. I'm not going to avoid it, but I'm not hunting for one. As soon as I did that, I started making connections with women. I started hooking up with girls. And then I found an actual person that I liked because I wasn't desperately looking for it. Girls can sense that stuff. And guys can too from women. So that's my advice to you, man, is get off the hookup apps if you don't want to be hooking up. To me, that seems obvious, but I don't know. Although, I don't, you might be in fucking lockdown too, so. All right, last one. A girl got obsessed with me too fast and now she's already buying me things. Dude, I got a couple players listening to this show. If you want to send an email to the show, send it through the podcast at lewspears.com. That is podcast at lewspears.com. Um, hey, Lewis, I started talking to this girl off Tinder. There's your problem. About a month ago. We had not, oh, well, this is going to contradict everything I've just said. <laughs> I started talking to, to this girl off Tinder a month ago. <clears throat> We'd only met up twice before things started getting weird. Yes, we had hooked up on both occasions. Okay, 
back to my point. Tinder is for hookups. This guy's obviously not interested in this chick. She's desperately... This is exactly what I'm saying. People can tell when you're desperate and they don't like it. It's strange. Um, <clears throat> uh, we'd met up only twice before things started getting weird. Yes, we had hooked up on both occasions. And also between this, uh, at some point, I did say that I did not want a full relationship or anything like that because he's on Tinder. He doesn't want a relationship. The third time we hung up, that's where he fucked up. If you don't want a relationship with a girl, do not hang out with her more than three times. You hang out with a chick, you fuck her more than three times, that's saying something, all right? Goes both ways. If you only want hookups, you get two and then you move on. You start doing three, four, you, you guys are dating now. Um, the third time we hung out, she was trying to, she was going to be in my area and asked if I wanted to hang out and I said yes. I'd mentioned somewhat to her that I'd been slightly sick over the past couple of days because she asked how I was doing. I got a COVID test just to be sure, but I was absolutely fine by this point. Then she said she bought me something and proceeds to give me a massive container of Swiss multivitamin vitamin C tablets because apparently it's good for cold symptoms. Yeah, she loves you. Uh, she went to a fucking chemist warehouse just to buy me the biggest container of vitamins they have. Before you ask... Uh, it was bigger than most vitamin containers I had seen, but not quite. Why would I ask that? <laughs> Why would I go, oh, wait, before I answer this email, exactly what were the dimensions of this vitamin container? That's essential to this story. The, some of the detail you guys put in this email emails confused the fuck out of me. I don't care how big your vitamin container is. Also, it doesn't really say much about the gesture. Vitamins are cheap. She then tells me she got me something else. Oh, here we go. She then gets out a four-pack of extra chewable gum. Well, how big was the pack? Uh, oh, well, he goes on to say. So like a value pack of four. I, why are you explaining this? A value pack of four packets with 14 sticks of gum. I don't give a fuck how, exactly how many sticks of gum are in the fucking thing. And she says because she remembered I was chewing gum the first time I met her. Okay, she's going to kill you, uh, which I was. I then say, is that it? as a joke and she starts to worry that I'm thinking it's weird and she says oh you say is that it as in go away okay now okay so she's being weird and you're being rude she then starts to worry that I'm thinking it's weird and says maybe I then ask what else she got me she had brought me she had brought three more more four packs so 16 packets of why does this guy keep telling me exactly how many fucking packets of gum are in each pack is he going to add it all up again? This is the weirdest thing about this fucking email. He's told me how exactly how big his vitamin C tablet container is, and then he's just listing off. This is this. You know what this reads? This reads like the fucking American Psycho book, where it just lists off specifically exactly what everyone's wearing, the brand, the color, and everything about the cut of the suit. So sixteen packets of gum total, two of each flavor. He's going into the flavors. And saying, I didn't know which, you, which one you liked. I was a bit freaked out. At least now, I guess I don't have to buy gum for the next six months. Everyone I've told this has said this was hilarious. Well, they should have said, hey, stop telling me about the gum. That's not the interesting part of the story. And very weird. But I wanted to get your thoughts on it, or at least to have a laugh about it. Cordially, Marcus. Use my name. It's fine if she hears it. Maybe she'll take a hint. Come on, bro. She's trying to be nice. Yeah, this is... Okay, Marcus, I'll be real with you. This is your fault. If you're just looking for casual hookups, don't... You don't meet up with someone for three times in a row, hang out with them, have sex with them for more than three times. Unless you are, like, in so incredibly clear that this is only going to be that, which it doesn't sound like you have. Um... Yeah, also between this, at some point, I did say that I didn't want a full relationship or anything like that. Okay, that doesn't sound like you made it very clear. You go, oh, I'm not really looking for a girlfriend. You know, you need to say, hey, I do not want to be in a relationship with you ever. This is only for sex. And if you're not okay with that, you need to stop seeing me because I will never be interested in you like that. That's how you got to do it because otherwise you're going to end up with 32 fucking packets of gum in your house. Um, and a woman who won't leave you alone. Yeah, look, I would say, Ma, mate, this is your fault. Sounds like you didn't make it clear. Stop seeing her, and then you won't have this problem. 
Also, who cares about your gum, all right? Thank you very much. That's the end of the podcast. Send the podcast uh, email uh, to podcast at loosebeers.com and uh, jump on Patreon right now for the Patreon episode. I'm uh, going... Uh, or, you know, an extra an extra half hour or so if you want more Spearhead Sundays. I'm going to be talking about what I'm, uh, you know, more about the move and, and the new team and everything like that and a bunch of other funny stuff. So check that out. It's up right now. And I'll see you in the Discord and I'll talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts.